Are you ready to take the Praxis Mathematics exam test number 5165? Well, stick with me, and by the end of this video, I'll make sure you're equipped with all the information, testing strategies, and confidence you need to pass this test. Welcome to the Praxis Test Prep channel. I'm Tom, a certified teacher and test prep expert with Study.com. We're proud to partner with ETS, the official provider of the Praxis exams, to bring you the most accurate and up to date information straight from the source. By the end of this video, you'll have everything you need to effectively prepare for this exam and take the next step in your teaching career. Ready? Let's jump in. Let's start with the basics. If you're an aspiring math teacher, then chances are you need to pass the Praxis math exam before securing a full-time teaching job at the middle or high school level. So what can you expect from the Praxis math exam specifically? This exam is designed to assess the knowledge and skills required for teaching mathematics effectively through the high school level. You will be tested on your mathematical reasoning skills, your ability to solve equations and perform calculations, as well as your ability to connect mathematic ideas to teaching practices. The test is broken into the following key topic areas, number and quantity and algebra, functions and calculus, geometry, and statistics and probability. We'll dive into more detail for each of these topics in this video, but just know that this remains consistent from prior years. Praxis Math Exam gives you 180 minutes to complete 66 questions, so time management is critical. To maximize your score, you need a solid approach to pacing and prioritization. Here's how to do that. Stick to about two and a half minutes per question on average. Use this as a general guide to keep you moving steadily through the exam. If you find an easier question, complete it quickly and bank a little extra time for the more challenging ones. And if you're stuck on a question, don't dwell on it. Mark it for review, skip it, and move on to the next one. In terms of the questions themselves, you can expect most questions to be standard, multiple choice. These questions may ask you to apply a mathematical principle, solve an equation, or evaluate a teaching approach, and then provide four or five answer choices where only one is correct. Remember, this means that you do not always have to know exactly how to solve the problem and can instead use the available answers to narrow down by limiting yourself to the offered options and removing obviously wrong answers. There may be a few questions, however, that follow a more unique format. These include multi-select questions where there may be more than one correct answer. These are signaled with select all that apply. These are a bit trickier and you will need to identify all correct answers to get points for the problem. There will also be a few numeric entry questions where you will not be given any answer choices and will instead be asked to solve a problem on your own and then type in your answer. Another strategy tip here, read every question carefully, especially with multi-select questions to ensure you don't miss which question format you are dealing with and are able to answer correctly. Now let's talk scoring. The Praxis Math Exam is scored on a scale of 100 to 200, and a passing score is generally a 159. However, every state has its own score requirements, so always check your state's guidelines on praxis.ets.org. I've linked to the specific page in the description. The ETS keeps their scoring logic confidential, even from us. However, a good rule of thumb is to take your state's passing score, subtract 100, and then treat the resulting number as a percent. That means if your passing score requirement is 159, you can roughly assume that you need to get at least 59% of the questions correct in order to pass. And that brings me to my next strategy tip. There is no penalty for wrong answers on the Praxis, and answering every question gives you the best chances of improving your score. Watch the timer and answer as many questions as possible to maximize your score, even if it means just guessing on hard questions or when time is running out. Also, make sure to use general test-taking strategies to boost your score. For example, cross out clearly wrong answers to narrow down your options and focus on the most likely choices. Look for hints in the question and answer choices, such as keywords, units, or patterns that can guide you toward the correct response. Additionally, if you're unsure about an answer, Try plugging in the given options or working backwards to see which one fits best. Don't forget to explore the other videos on this channel as they provide detailed examples and step-by-step -step guides to help you tackle different question types with confidence. Okay, back to the Praxis Math Exam. You are never allowed to bring in your own calculator to a Praxis exam. However, ETS provides an on-screen calculator for some of their exams. Good news, Praxis Math is one of those. You'll have an on-screen graphing calculator that you'll have access to throughout the exam. This calculator offers a bunch of features. My next strategy tip relates to this. 
Practice using the calculator before test day. There's a free tutorial version on the ETS website so you can get familiar with it and not fumble with the tool during the exam. I provided a direct link down in the description. Few more calculator specific tips. First, use the memory function to save results from multi-step calculations. Next, avoid rounding intermediate calculations till a final step to ensure the accuracy of your answer. And finally, double check mode settings like degree versus radian before solving the problem. Another common question I get for the test is around formulas. The Praxis Math exam does provide you with a basic notation and formula sheet that you may reference during the exam. However, I always encourage test takers not to depend on this sheet. It may not be inclusive of every formula that you will need and you do not want your first experience with using a specific formula to be on test day. I'm going to show some common formulas on screen that you should make sure that you are comfortable with. Feel free to pause to jot them down and please take time to practice solving problems with these formulas so that you're confident using them on test day. Now I have some really important information on scrap paper. This is an important resource on test day and can help you work through problems and keep your calculations straight, but you need to follow ETS's rules. If you're taking your test in person at a testing center, make sure you request scrap paper from your proctor and don't attempt to bring in your own. You also need to return the scrap paper to the proctor at the end of the test. If the proctor sees you taking your own paper out of your pocket or doesn't think you've returned all the scrap paper at the end, you may get accused of cheating and your score will be invalidated. If you're taking the test at home on your own computer, you cannot take notes on regular paper and you'll be asked to erase all notes in view of the proctor at the end of the test. To take notes at home, ETS recommends that you use a dry erase board with a marker. You won't be allowed to start the test if you try to use a regular sheet of paper. All right, now let's dive a little deeper into the content that you'll see on test day. The Praxis Math exam is divided into six categories. The first category is number and quantity. This accounts for about seven of the questions on the exam and about 10% of your final score. Number and quantity questions test your understanding of fundamental number concepts and operations. This includes working with properties of numbers, ratios, and proportional reasoning. More specifically, You'll need to demonstrate proficiency with real and complex numbers, exponents, radicals, scientific notation, and proportional relationships. Additionally, you'll be tested on your knowledge of factors, multiples, number systems, and performing unit conversions. Mastery of these topics is essential for solving a variety of mathematical problems efficiently and accurately. The next category is algebra. This accounts for about 13 questions and 20% of your final score. Algebra questions test your ability to solve various types of equations and simplify various types of expressions. This includes solving for x in single variable equations and rearranging expressions to identify equivalent forms. You'll also be expected to create, solve, and manipulate mathematical statements, including inequalities, polynomials, quadratic equations, and systems of equations. Additionally, the section tests your ability to analyze both linear and nonlinear expressions and interpret graphical information such as slope and intercept. If you have questions here, make sure to check out our practice problem video specifically on number and quantity and algebra sections. Third category is functions. This also accounts for roughly 13 questions and 20% of your final score. Function questions test your ability to analyze different types of functions, including linear, quadratic, polynomial, exponential, and logarithmic. Expect questions on domain and range, function transformations, composition, and inverses. The fourth category is calculus. This accounts for roughly seven questions and 10% of your final score. Calculus questions cover limits, derivatives, and integrals. You'll solve problems involving rates of change, continuity, differentiation, and integration, while also interpreting graphs and applying calculus concepts in various contexts. If you have questions here, make sure to check out our practice problems videos specifically on functions and calculus. The fifth category is geometry. This accounts for roughly 13 questions and 20% of your final score. Geometry questions cover everything from shapes and transformations to congruence, similarity, and coordinate geometry. You'll work with angles, triangles, and polygons, apply geometric theorems, and use trigonometric functions to solve problems. Make sure you're familiar with topics in 3D geometry, like surface area and volume, plus coordinate geometry for analyzing shapes. Final category is statistics and probability. This also accounts for roughly 13 questions and 20% of your final score. Statistics and probability questions evaluate your ability to work with data, 
probability concepts, and statistical problem solving. At a high level, this includes summarizing and interpreting data, analyzing distributions, and applying key statistical measures such as mean, median, and mode, as well as standard deviation. You'll also encounter questions on data displays, distinguishing correlation from causation, and applying probability rules, including conditional probability and expected values. If you have questions here, make sure to check out our practice problem videos, specifically on the geometry as well as the statistics and probability sections. Finally, since the exam measures both your math knowledge and how you teach it, expect situational questions that reflect real classroom scenarios. You might be asked to evaluate a student's reasoning, choose the best teaching strategy for a concept, or spot common misconceptions students have. To prepare, focus not just on mastering the content areas, but also on explaining math in a way that makes sense to students. Practicing how to break down complex ideas into clear, understandable steps will help you feel confident tackling both the content and the teaching-focused questions on the exam. Okay, I know this is a lot, but stick with me just a little longer. Let's talk about preparing for the practice math exam. It's going to require a targeted approach, which brings me to my final strategy tip. Take a full-length practice test early in your prep. This identifies your strengths and pinpoints areas you need to work on. Think of it as your roadmap for focused studying. Here's a bonus tip. If a full-length test feels too daunting, consider checking out study.com's diagnostic quizzes. Study.com has customized quizzes for each practice test code to analyze your performance and create personalized study plans. This helps you focus your efforts where it will have the biggest impact. Finally, regardless of how or where you're practicing, try to practice like it's the real test. Stick to your time limits and limit yourself to the resources that you'll have available on test day. Remember, preparation isn't just about learning the content. It's also about mastering test-taking strategies and building the confidence to succeed on test day. And that's it, your ultimate guide to conquering the Praxis Math exam. For more detailed practice, strategies, and walkthroughs, check out our Praxis Math playlist here on YouTube, and then make your way over to study.com and check out one of our Praxis test prep courses. Our users boast a 92% pass rate, and our courses include full-length exams, hundreds of practice questions, and additional video lessons specifically tailored to the latest test updates. With our resources, you'll know exactly what to expect on test day. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more updates on Praxis exams. And leave your questions and success stories in the comments below. Remember, we're rooting for you every step of the way. You've got this.